Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I'm your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create a splatter effect for your photos in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions I need to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, whenever I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started by first discussing how this effect can be worked into your workflow. Um, I'm calling it a splatter effect, but this can actually be done with any type of brush that gives the same stylistic look. You can use splatter brushes, grunge brushes, glass brushes, um, uh, smoke brushes, any brush that will give this that that will give a similar look and feel can be used for this effect. So don't get caught up in me calling it a splatter effect because it can be used with just about any other brush. Second, you need to have a uh, an image where you have cut out your main subject from the background and put it onto a transparent background. Okay, now I've already done that in the image that I'm going to be using uh, because I wanted to save some time, but uh, just know that you need to first cut out your subject from its background or the effect does not work. Uh, last bit is you need to have the brushes that you want to use for the effect. Now for this tutorial, I have some splatter brushes that I uh, that are free. There's a link in the description below where you can download them and install them into, uh, into Photoshop to use for this tutorial. Uh, so feel free to use those. But again, you can use just about any brush for this effect as long as it looks or gives a similar feel as the splatter brushes do. And once we're done with the effect, you'll see what I mean. Um, also, the uh, image that I'm using for this, if you wanna follow along, there's a link in the description below so you can download that, cut the uh, footballer from the background, and then follow along with me. Okay, so all of that, all of that out of the way, let's really get started now by bringing in our image like so. Now, like I said, this image, I've already cut out our, our footballer right here. Uh, he is on his own layer, so I can put in a white background uh, or leave it as black background and it's all good. So make sure that you are ready with that. Now just to be ready and start, I'm going to take our footballer and I'm just going to move him to the center of the image just so that I have as much room around him as possible. Now this effect looks really good if you only use, let's say, one side of your uh, person. Let's say if uh, for this guy, I might only want the left half of him to look like he's splattered or, or, or dissolving in, or maybe it's all smoke and he's, he's forming into the footballer. However you want to do it, usually you only want one side or one piece so that it has that cool kind of uh, dispersion forming into a person kind of effect. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to do the effect all around him. Now, it's not going to be quite as cool, um, but I'm doing it all around him just to show how much you need to uh, liquefy the uh, subject in order to get as much use out of the dispersion or splatter effect, okay, as you can. So I'm going to do it that way uh, just to show you how it's done. Okay, so... Uh, Let's, uh, let's take our football player now that he's cut out from the background and let's right click on it and let's convert to a smart object. Okay, it needs to be a smart object. That's the easiest way for this to work. Okay, once you have done that, you're gonna duplicate this by hitting Control J on the keyboard to make a duplicate layer and then we're gonna rename them. Let's rename this uh, Warped because we're gonna be warping him and the uh, top one we will name Original, Original. Uh, and there we have our two layers. And that's really all that you need for this effect. It's not a difficult effect. It is, however, a little time consuming. So during this uh, tutorial, I will be speeding up certain parts just so that we get through it uh, without wasting a lot of your time because I know you just want to see how it's done. Okay, so first thing uh, now that we've renamed them, duplicated them, and turned them into uh, smart objects is turn off the original layer so that it's only the warped layer because now we're going to warp this by using our liquify filter. So let's go up here to filter. Let's go to uh, liquify and that will open up the liquify uh, uh, options box and the only one that we're going to be using is forward warp tool. 
Now, uh, a couple of important points about using the liquify filter for this effect. Uh, there's a lot of empty space around your subject. You wanna fill in as much of it and as far as it as you can with your liquefied subject. Because when you do the splatter effect or the smoke effect or the broken glass effect, you want the, uh, the effect to go out as far as necessary. And having too much is fine. Having too much of a warped person underneath uh, is fine because you don't see anything except the broken particles. Again, it's hard to explain perfectly this way, but just follow along and you will understand. Now, what, you, what I'm talking about is you're using your forward warp tool. You're using a fairly standard size brush like, uh, like this, which I am using, which is a 300. You can go bigger or smaller depending on the size of, uh, of your original image. But for this effect, uh, for, for this particular image that I'm using, 300 works fine. And you want to just click within the subject and just start dragging it out. Okay? And uh, you want to go, like I said, as far as you can uh, with your pieces. Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind while you're doing this uh, is if you're going on a solid background like I am, I'm, I'm going to be using a white background here just to give you an idea as to how this works. You see how over here there is white and uh, in his jersey there is white and the football has the white stripe. You want to make sure that the white parts of, of this are minimized. So when you stretch out, say, this part right here, you want to make sure that you don't have this much white because when you do the particle effects, white on white doesn't show and that kind of ruins the effect. So you want to take the blue parts here and you want to kind of mush it into the white parts so that you don't see as much of the white parts as you would think you would. Okay, and then you just want to keep going out like that. All right, and you want to fill as much of this as you can. Like I said, it's important because the, uh, the dispersion or the splatter effect or the smoke effect is gonna be using all of this to create its look. And the more of it that you have, the better the look will be. So with that, I'm gonna now speed up this portion so that uh, because I think you get the idea of what you're supposed to do here, I'll speed this up and I'll be back when we're ready to continue. Okay, as you can see, uh, we now have a fully warped uh, a subject that we can work with. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit OK and let Photoshop do its little liquify uh, magic. And then it will place it behind our guy. Okay, there we go. We now have our warp layer. We can then uh, hide that uh, and leave the warp layer on. So then we're going to turn on the original again. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use a layer mask to hide the warp layer and then a layer mask to show the original layer. It sounds a little weird, but let's see what we're doing here. We're going to go to our warp layer. We're going to hold down alt on the keyboard and we're going to click on the create layer mask and that will create a black layer mask, which hides the entirety of the warped layer. Then we're going to go up to the original layer here, select that, and we're going to just click on the create layer mask, which creates a white uh, layer mask, which means that we can still see our original guy. Okay, so there we have it. We now have our two layers, uh, one that is completely hidden and one that is showing. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install our brushes. Okay, so if you don't see your brush preset um, uh, layer, what you want to do is you want to go over here to window and you want to go to uh, brush presets like so do that and it will show up. Okay, then you want to go to your brushes, which is B on the keyboard, or you can go over here to the uh, uh, options bar here and select on your toolbar for the brush tool. Okay, once you have that, uh, you'll see the default brushes or whatever brushes you happen to have already installed. And you want to go up to the little uh, hamburger icon up here, click on that, go down to uh, load brushes. Okay, and then find the uh, splatter brushes or whatever brushes that you want to use. Double click on that and then they will load underneath all of your other brushes. So here you can see that they are starting here. There is a drippy uh, splatter brush. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have the correct brushes. You want to make sure that you are on your original layer here on the, the white 
uh, layer mask of it. You don't want to be on the actual layer itself because you don't want to destroy those pixels. What you want to do is be on the layer mask. Okay, the layer mask is white, which means that what we want to draw with will be black. So you can see that we are on black and white here. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to switch so that black is our foreground color. So that is X on the keyboard, or you can hit on the little arrow here, or you can just select the color and choose black. Any one of those ways works great. Okay, now uh, you can see that the drip here goes up and down. And I selected this so that I could show you how this can be used. Okay, up and down is nice, but it's not exactly uh, very useful, say, on the sides of our, our uh, image here. So uh, a lot of times people will tell you to go to the brush tool here and then select over here, which turns your brush, and then you can flip it and move it, the angle like this, you know, to, to change the angle of it, right? But that is not the way that I like to do it because in order to do that, you got to go way over here, uh, move this, hope that it's right, move back, oh no, that's not right, go back over here, then go back over here. It's a little bit too, uh, a little bit too uh, annoying for me to do, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. It, it's not hard, it's just annoying. So instead of doing it that way, we'll go back to our brush preset so that we can choose different brushes. Uh, instead of doing it that way, what we'll do is we'll turn the canvas itself. Now there's a quick shortcut key, just hold down R on the keyboard, okay, and you'll see that you'll change into a little turn icon here and then you can click and drag and you'll see a little compass show up and you can move this around now you're wondering oh wow I can move that stuff around but what if I wanted to go back to normal well you just hold down the R key again and you move it and it will snap into place once it gets back to normal like so okay so that's how we can move the uh, the canvas around however we want in order to use our brushes and uh, let's start with something very easy here. Let's start with this guy right here. All right, now, uh, the way that I like to do this, and you can feel free to ignore this advice however you'd like, is I like to use brushes and then cut out pieces of the edge of my uh, main subject so that it looks like pieces of him have been uh, splattered away or are just forming. So, for example, with this brush, I like the top part of it. So I'm going to rotate my canvas around like this, and I'm going to use the top portion of it right over here on his head. Uh, let's go like this, right over here on his head like so. Bip. And you can see that now he has that little splatter on his head. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way around his exterior with some of these brushes and then I'll grab some of these brushes here and do the interior of his body so that it looks like he's been splattered on, but I won't waste your time by doing that live. I will speed this up for you uh, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so I've uh, I've done a little splattering on the original uh, background, uh, on the original's uh, mask layer here. Uh, and you can see that it, it looks like he's been kind of splattered away. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in uh, our warped layer uh, in the background and on top of him so that it looks like he has been completely splattered. So once again, it, it's pretty easy. You select your, uh, make sure that you select the layer mask for the warp layer. Make sure that your uh, foreground color is white. Now, if you're using black and white like I am, what you're going to do is hit X and that will swap your foreground and background so that the uh, foreground color is now white. And then you're just going to paint on the layer mask, not on the layer itself, but on the layer mask with white to show the layer mask. Now I'll show you once and then I will speed it up so that we can come back and, uh, and uh, see the final product. So let's rotate this just a little bit and uh, right about here at his shoulder, let's make it uh, a little bit bigger like so. Rotate it a little bit more like that. Bang. And there you go. See? A nice big splatter. And we're going to do that throughout uh, the entire image here. And uh, I'll be back once I have done this. I'll speed this up and you uh, won't have to waste too much time. Okay, and so as you can see, I've done all of this work uh, and we now have our splatter effect pretty much laid out here. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in a little bit of adjustment layers to, uh, to really kind of make this stand out a little bit more because right now the splatter effect, it, it, it looks too much like our main subject, so it just kind of 
uh, all molds together. And we don't really want that usually. Now, if that's what you're going for, you can stop right here and, and that's all good. But that's not really what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is for it to stand out, for our main subject to kind of pop off of the splatter. Okay, now with smoke effects, you don't want that. What you want in the smoke effect is you want it to look as if the main subject is uh, being made out of the smoke of itself. So uh, you don't want to separate it. So for those effects, you would want to keep what we have right now and that would be the end of it. Uh, but for this particular effect, I'm going to show you how to uh, really separate the main subject from the splatter background. So what we're going to do is select our warped layer here and uh, we are going to add in a new uh, vibrance adjustment layer right above there. Okay, and make sure that your vibrance adjustment layer is uh, only going to affect the warped layer. And the way that we do that is we hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, you hover your mouse in between the vibrance layer and the warped layer, and it will turn into this little arrow here. Click once, and then it will only affect the layer directly below it, which is our warped layer. And then what we want to do is go to our properties for the vibrance layer, and we want to bring it all the way up to 100 and saturation all the way up to 100. Okay, then the next thing that we're going to do is add in another adjustment layer, and that is a hue saturation adjustment layer. And again, we're going to make sure that it only is clipping to the warped layer by holding down Alt and then clicking in between the hue saturation and vibrance layers. And you can see the little arrow over here on the left for both of them. That means that it's only affecting the warped layer and not the layers below it or the layers above it. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to change the saturation here to negative um, 60. And we're going to change the lightness to 20. Now you can play around with these uh, if you want. You can change the hue of everything, you know, if you really want to get funky with it. But I'm going to leave that as is for now. And we're going to say that this is now done. And if you, uh, if you take a look here, it looks like the ink has kind of dried on the splatter. But the guy, our main subject, is sticking out from it. Now if you didn't want, for example, to see the, uh, the uh, paint splatters in your main subject, you can always not do this uh, original layer thing and you can just leave him like that and you have the splatters behind him. I happen to think that that looks a little bit too contrived so that's why I prefer to have the uh, the original layer have a few uh, cutouts or splatters on them to make it look more as if they were being created from the splatters or the smoke or the broken glass or what have you. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. And once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.